Hey, it's Abba Girl, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be making homemade potato chips from scratch. I've been making them every few months for the last year or so, and I personally feel like they're a bit better than popular store-bought potato chip brands like Lay's, but that's just an opinion, don't come at me for it. And besides the delicious homemade crispy taste, they are definitely healthier, but I still won't call them healthy because they are fried and they're just for snacking. And that brings up another point. This recipe does require frying, so if you're not comfortable with frying with oil, don't do it, please. Or better yet, just get someone who is more comfortable with frying to do it for you. And if you make these chips right, I'm telling you, it's gonna taste so good. And if you leave it out for family or friends, you already know it's gonna be gone real quick. It took me about two hours and 30 minutes total, so just know you might be standing for a long time. And this isn't to scare you away though, trust me, it's worth it. Okay, let's get started. First off, we need to slice up our raw potatoes, and I recommend using a vegetable slicer like the one I got here rather than a knife to get the slices as thin as possible, as quickly as possible, and also as safe as possible. And it is possible to cut thin slices using a knife, because that's how I started out making potato chips. It's just that you'll have to be extra careful, and it will take a lot more time than if you just had a veggie slicer. I'll link this set I'm using down below. <laughs> So here you can see I'm leaving the ends of the potatoes since I'm not planning to use them as chips and also because I don't want to keep slicing if I'm getting too close to my fingers. That'll just be testing my luck. After slicing a potato, I sash the slices in a bowl to the side so they don't get in the way while I'm cutting the remaining potatoes. It's okay to cut some imperfect slices because the shape really won't matter in the finished product. So every slice is usable unless it's like a rotted piece of potato or just like a sliver of a potato piece. And here I am slicing the last potato. And now we're done slicing. Here is how the chip should be looking at this point. Next, I move the slices to a larger bowl and rinse them, but just a little bit. And then I added all the water, and I think I added a little bit more than my recipe said to, just to make sure the potato slices are fully submerged. After that, I went and got a bowl of ice to add and make it icy water. And finally, I added the salt to the water. Bro, looks like someone tried lifting the wrong tab, but anyways, after adding the salt, I stirred it just to make sure the salt is well distributed throughout the bowl. Mm-hmm. 
Now I have to let the potato chips sit for 30 minutes in this bowl of salty, icy water. I did have to add more ice a few times because the ice was melting a bit too fast and I need to keep that water icy. But for the most part, I was able to sit down and take a break, which I recommend you do because the next part after this one is kind of tedious. When the 30 minutes were up, I had to dry the potato chips, so I used a strainer and also a lot of paper towels to get them as dry as possible. After that, I made my chip seasoning by combining my basil, my sea salt, and my black pepper in a tiny bowl. Basil and sea salt, I'm using it as alternatives for garlic powder and celery salt because I don't have those, so if you do have those, use those instead. Next, I got my oil pan and put it on the stove to prepare for frying. And then I got myself a little setup near the stove. Of course, I got my potato slices and I got a large plate with paper towels on it for where I'd put the finished chips, as well as the seasoning bowl right next to it. And I also got a huge spoon I'll use to fry. I made sure to zip up my jacket since using the stove with loose clothing is not a good idea. Especially when you're frying. Not a good idea. And then I was ready. So the plan is to fry these chips in batches and also be stirring and flipping them frequently. So here we go. I placed some of the potato slices into the pan and the frying began. Ooh, that rhymed. Ooh, okay. So I alternated between just letting the slices sit in the oil and going back to do the stirring and the flipping. After a while, I changed my spoon to this metal spoon, which I find is best for making potato chips, but I also know people really like those skimmer slotted spoons, so if you have one of those, I recommend you use that one over this. Thank you. 
A few minutes later, the first batch was ready, which you can tell by them reaching the perfect golden color and also them not being super soft when you touch them with your spoon and like you're actually hearing the clink when you hit it with your spoon. Like, I promise you'll know, don't worry, or at least you'll know by the second batch. When they are ready, use your spoon to take them out before they get burnt and place them on the paper towel plate. And then immediately, as in right when you put those chips on the plate and they are straight out of the oil, sprinkle them with the chip seasoning we made earlier with not too much, but just enough. And it is important to do this immediately you take the chips from the pan so that the seasoning and the flavor will stick to the chips. Then I add the next batch, which always caused the oil to go a bit wild, and I assume that's because the lower slices are still a bit damp, so make sure you put it in the pan using the spoon and avoid being near any splash. And from there on, I pretty much do the same thing for the rest of the batches. Now I'm nearly finished with the last batch. And there we are, got a bunch of delicious homemade potato chips. The plate and the paper towels are mainly for draining the extra oil, so I then moved the chips to a bowl after washing my hands, of course. Just look at this masterpiece. And then I took out all the burnt and the soft chips for me myself to eat so I could leave the good ones for whoever else would come and eat some chips. If you do have chips remaining by the end of the day, it's important to put all the remaining chips in a bag that is airtight so that it won't get soft like normal chips do when you leave them out and unsealed. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this video was helpful to you if you plan on making your own homemade potato chips. Goodbye and I'll see y'all next time.